So for today, what we're going to get into is thermostats. Thermostats are really a pretty simple component in HVAC that we deal with every single day. But we got to learn what they are and how to wire them and ultimately learn what to do if you know, if thermostat was happens to, to break. So the first thing that we got to learn is, is what is actually a thermostat? Well, a thermostat is nothing more than a switch that is mounted on the wall that is activated by changes in the surrounding air temperature. Now, with many homeowners, businesses, people don't necessarily know, at least the average homeowner, I would probably say maybe the average homeowner doesn't necessarily really know what's going on when they flip a thermostat to either the cooling mode or for the heating mode. Really, all they really know is, is that, okay, when I turn the dial up, I'm going to get heat. When I turn the dial down, I'm going to get air conditioning. But you, as the HVAC professional that we all are, we know that there's a little bit more involved to what a thermostat actually does. So the first thing that we got to do is we think about the old mercury thermostats, you know, the ones that Grandma used to have on her on her wall. Well, those were mercury. They had a mercury bulb inside them. Nowadays, that's actually considered a hazardous material. If today we have a thermostat that is mercury style, we have to take them off the wall. We got to bring them back to the supply house where they can properly send them off to be disposed of correctly. Now, you know, back in the day, we used to take them off and throw them in the garbage, but not anymore. So those had mercury in them. Are they still around today? Absolutely. Okay, they're still around. One thing that you have to make sure of when you are dealing with a mercury thermostat is that it is properly installed. Mercury thermostats or thermostats for, for any of that matter, they should be mounted on an interior wall five feet off of the ground or five feet off of the floor. Why do we do that? Well, we have to think about building construction. If we have a thermostat that is on an outside wall, that thermostat is going to start sensing the cold air that's outside, especially if the wall is not well insulated. If I have a thermostat that is higher than five feet off of the, off of the ground or lower than five feet off the ground, I'm not going to get a accurate reading of the room temperature. We have to think of air stratification. The higher I go in a room, the warmer the air. The farther I go down in a room or closer to the floor I get, the colder the air. So roughly around five feet on a wall or five feet in a room, that is really where we have a relatively constant temperature or a stabilized temperature. Okay, so for mercury thermostats, that was really, really important. We had to make sure that they were in the proper location. We had to make sure that they were level on the wall, otherwise the mercury inside the bulb would not register the correct temperature and turn on the system or shut off the system when it was supposed to. Okay, so the mercury was used because it obviously had stored liquid at room temperature. They were not as sensitive as uh, your programmable thermostats today. Uh, mercury thermostats do have a temperature swing or a temperature difference that are on them, and that's usually probably anywhere between two and maybe four degrees of uh, temperature swing on them. But that's just the way they, they are, and that's just the way they operate. They do have a heat anticipator on them, which is used to... Um, shut a furnace off prematurely so that we don't drastically overshoot uh, the thermostat set point. 
these types of thermostats were only used to set one temperature at a time. So if we were in heat and we wanted to set it to 70 degrees, we had to flip the switch to heat, turn it to 70. If we wanted to go to cooling, we had to switch the thermostat to cooling and then make the adjustments to where you wanted your temperature to be. So there it is. There's what your mercury thermostat would look like in the back. Actually, in this case, this is a heating and cooling mercury style thermostat. So up here, this would probably be our, our heating uh, connection. This would be our cooling connection. And here is our heat anticipator. Basically, all this was was just a slight little heater that was on there that would premature, that would heat up just slightly to uh, prematurely uh, open the mercury contacts, shutting off the uh, furnace uh, so that we didn't drastically overshoot. Then you would have your snap acting or snap action thermostats. Inside these guys, there is no mercury inside them. They are relatively inexpensive. They're actually very, very cheap uh, to purchase. They are accurate, but not as sensitive as a digital thermostat. It does have a heat anticipator, in, and it is also one of those that you can only put one temperature at a time. With snap acting thermostats, to me, in my professional opinion, these things are only like temporary um, thermostats that you would probably put on a wall just to kind of maybe get somebody uh, either air conditioning or heat. Uh, just to kind of get through the day or through the night until you can get a more permanent thermostat in them. Uh, they are sometimes, you know, left in homes. Me personally, I don't think they're really that great, I guess is the word, but you are going to definitely see them. And this is what a therm snap acting thermostat would look like inside. Notice there is no mercury in there, but yet here are our contacts. So when I actually close my, set my thermostat to whatever temperature it is, that therm that connection would close, turning on my unit. Here is my heat anticipator, which again works as the same exact function for prematurely shutting off the furnace uh, when I, when I need to so that I don't overshoot my temperatures. And then obviously here are my terminals for my uh, thermostat wires. Your digital thermostats, there is again, there is no mercury inside them. They operate by a circuit board and a sensor. These are very uh, sensitive and they do have a sensitivity range of up to about a half a degree on them. Uh, depending on the brand and model of the thermostat being installed, you can set more than one temperature on them. I know for these types of thermostats, you can set two different set points for your heating and your cooling. They also have the auto feature on them where you do not have to touch the thermostat. It will automatically switch between heat and cool. One thing that is really important when it comes to thermostats is learning the wiring terminals. When I look at a thermostat sub-base where I'm going to be connecting my wires to, I have to know what terminals do what. That is really, really, really important. So when you look at a thermostat sub-base, you're going to see at least these terminals here. You're going to see RC, RH, which is your 24 volt power cooling or 24 volt power heat. Some, on most cases, you will see a, a jumper or a little copper band on the sub base that's going to jump between RC and RH. The reason why we have that is so that we don't have to have more than one power wire. Um, sent to the thermostat so that we can send 24 volts to the thermostat. It depends on the model. It depends on the, the application. You may not have a jumper there. You may have a jumper there, but usually there's a jumper there on, on most cases. Your Y terminal is for your cooling. 
Your W is for all of your heat, and G is for your indoor blower. That is really, 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 really important to know. So that when you're looking at a thermostat subbase, you know what those terminals are actually controlling. So here we are, as like I just said before. You may have a jumper, you may not have a jumper. If you don't have a jumper, you will most likely see two red wires being connected to your RC and RH. So remember, this is my 24 volt power for my heating components. This is my 24 volt power for all my cooling components. If there is a jumper here, we only need one wire because once I send power into here, it automatically jumps into my RC. So both of these will be power. It's just another way of wiring. It depends on the application. It depends on what we're doing. Okay, another important thing that we need to know on is our terminals for our much higher end thermostats where we're maybe commercial industrial type stuff where again you're going to see terminals of RC and RH and that's going to be my 24 volt power you're going to see a terminal for Y1 that's going to be my first stage cooling Y2 is my second stage cooling W1 is my first stage heat W2 is my second stage heat G again is just for my indoor fan O, you may see, if you're dealing with a heat pump, that's going to be energizing your uh, reversing valve, and then you may see a common or a C terminal. Another thing that we need to understand and know and definitely learn is our colors for a lot of our components when we're wiring a thermostat. When we are wiring a thermostat red, the red color wire is going to be our 24 volt power. G is going to be green. Y1 is going to be yellow. Y2, if you do have a two stage thermostat on there, is usually going to be blue. Y1 is going to be white. Or, I'm sorry, W1 is going to be white. W2 is going to be brown. Your reversing valve is going to be orange and your common is going to be black. However, I have seen on some cases where the common wire may be a different color, but usually it's going to be the black wire. So your heat anticipator is a device that will shut down the heating circuit prematurely of the set point so the system does not overshoot the set point temperature. Remember, the set point is what you set the thermostat to. So if you set it for 70 degrees, that's the set point. Okay, so what we're going to do is you're going to look at a thermostat and you're going to see this little little wire here, like this little resistive wire. This little resistive wire actually, when we apply power to it, will generate just a small amount of heat on it. That small amount of heat will prematurely open the contacts on our heating circuit, shutting off our burner to our, our furnace so that we don't overshoot that 70 degree set point or whatever it is that you're setting it to. So when we're setting a heat anticipator, we want to do a couple of things. We got to use a meter first off to do this. Okay. So we're going to take the meter to the thermostat and we're going to set it to amps. Then we are going to take another wire, a jumper, and we're going to jump the R and the W terminal. Remember, R is 24 volt power, W is our heat. We're going to take that wire that we're using as a jumper and we're going to wrap it around our amp, our amp meter or our amp probe at least 10 times. Okay, it doesn't have to be 10 times, but we'd like to try to do it at least 10 times. We're going to read the meter, and then we're going to divide it by 10, or however amount of times you've wrapped that wire around. Okay, that is going to be your heat anticipator set point. So what you're going to do is you're going to take that little dial right here, and you're going to move it to whatever that reading is that you just calculated. Okay, and that will set your heat anticipator. Now that thermostat is now properly set up to shut off at 
at the correct time. Okay? If we don't have this information or what have you, sometimes you can find the heat anticipator setting on the unit information sticker or sometimes it's actually in the um, installation instructions or, or somewhere in that area where you can actually set the heat anticipator to whatever it needs to be. And the last thing that we really got to know is the symbols when we're looking at a electrical diagram. What does the thermostat look like? Well, thermostats are broken into two, two symbols. You have a heating thermostat and you have a cooling thermostat. But when we look at that symbol, it really represents two things. It represents the switch that we use to open and close the set of contacts. And it's also going to represent the bimetal sensing element. That's what this little crooked little line looks like. That's representing the bimetal helix that's going to expand and contract based off of your temperature. So when we look at a heating thermostat, it's going to open on temperature rise. So as the warm air <coughs> heats up, this bimetal helix is going to expand. And as that expands, it's going to open that contact as the warm air cools off it's now going to contract it's going to shrink and as it shrinks or as the temperature drops in a room that switch will now close the same thing applies to our cooling it's going to close on temperature rise so as the more air heats up in a room, it's going to expand, and that bimetal helix is now going to close that set of, that switch, turning on our air conditioning. As the air cools off, it contracts, the switch will now open. 